So I commend it to the House. I call Jan Logie. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, it's a huge honour to stand in the House tonight to um, contribute and offer the Green Party support for the first reading of the Care and Support Workers Pay Equity Settlement Bill. Um, I just I want to join with the others um, who have spoken already and really just so full-heartedly paying tribute to Christine Bartlett and her ETU union colleagues and the um, NZNO and PSA colleagues who came and joined the fight. This is a step along the journey that was started by Kate Shepherd over 120 years ago that the suffragettes in this country, next on their agenda was equal pay for work of equal value. And here we are, we've been slowly, slowly moving and, and this is a struggle. <laughs> and I just want to just express how incredibly impressed I am at these women for getting this across the line. This is a truly historic moment and gives hope to so many other women in this country who have been undervalued and exploited for far too long. So thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of the Green Party. Um, I want to, too, acknowledge that as alongside the um, pay equity struggle, this has also been a struggle for um, recognition and valuing specifically of work in the aged care sector. And this has been a struggle that's been going on for 30 years in this sector alone, um, with select committee reports and inquiries and volumes of paper, including an inquiry done by the Labour Party with Winnie Laban and Sue Kedgley from the Green Party in 2012. And then, of course, the... Um, very notable report by the EEO Commissioner um, Judy McGregor, Caring Counts, that all identified that training and pay were a major issue that needed to be re have been resolved well ahead of time in the caring industry. And I, you know, do just want to point to that um, Judy McGregor through the Human Rights Commission and that incredibly considered report where she went in undercover and worked as an aged care um, worker, she laid out a time frame for resolving these issues as well as the other issues in the sector in relation to training. And we would have had this sorted by 2016, by last year, all of the issues in the sector if the government had picked up on that expert advice. It was laid out there to do, but the government instead chose to intervene alongside the employers against Christine Bartlett and the aged care workers who were seeking justice and an end to exploitation in the courts. And we have to um, really, you know, and that Christine, and it too, were forced to go as far as the Supreme Court. And you've got to, like, really, I think people need to get their heads around the fact that these were some of the New Zealand's lowest paid workers who gave up a section of their pay that could go to feeding their families and keeping a roof over their head towards their union contributions to pay for a court case that had to go all the way to the Supreme Court because the employers and the government kept on challenging the decisions of the employment court when this never needed to go to court. Because anyone that's had any dealings with aged care work has known that those workers mostly women workers, have been being exploited. That that job is an incredibly skilled job and is worth so much more than minimum wage. 
everyone, it's been, it was one of those things for me out on the election trail and many elections, or well, the two I've been through, the, um, when you're talking to people about inequality and they were like, yeah, I think people should, you know, they just need to work harder or, you know, pull their socks up. And then you'd say, well, what about the aged care workers? You know who are minimum wage who are struggling to pay your bills? Um, you know, don't you think that's a problem? And every time that person had no comeback because everyone recognised how incredibly valuable the work that they do is and how all of us want that good, friendly person there to be there for us when we get to that time in our lives. Um, and I do want to point out, oh, there's so much to say, um, just to touch on some of those points around just specifically acknowledging some of the work that people do, that are doing in aged care and that pay and training that have been being pushed for and um, is really important, but also staffing levels are important and that hasn't yet been acknowledged and we need to keep working on that because I think it puts an undue pressure on what is already an incredibly difficult job. Um, and I do also want to acknowledge that this is, it's a little bit um, like a treaty settlement in some ways in the context that you've got to, I acknowledge the massive effort and the achievement and the work that's gone into getting this and the feat of negotiation to get this result and the recognition of a fundamental right that underlies this around pay equity and for the end of exploitation. But we have to recognise that this and legislation on the table is a deal that has been done in lieu of a just response. And it is a deal that the unions and Christine have been extraordinary what they've managed to achieve against a government that's fought them all the way. But it is a deal. And as the Employment Court recognised, economic arguments don't stack up when it comes to pay equity. It's, you know, economic arguments were used to justify slavery, and we kind of get that that's wrong. And when this, we're seeing the pay increase being phased in over five years, that's telling me that the government is still, despite the court rulings and despite the pressure, are still thinking that the economic arguments override the basic fundamental right and the basic fundamental drive to end exploitation. I do want to acknowledge that the unions have managed to, in this deal, that they've given up the right to back pay. And we need to acknowledge that, that that is an established right in our courts, and they have given that up. And they've given it up through the negotiation to be able to get the addressing qualifications and minimum standards, which they have been fighting for for so long. And that is, again, another indication of the fact that these mostly women put the care of the, women, the people that they are serving and working for first above some of their basic legal entitlements and rights. And that just, you know, hats off to them. I, I wish I could express it better, but I have so much admiration for them and we should all just be so grateful for these women and be committing to ending that exploitation whenever we can, as quickly as we can, um, because they shouldn't be having to trade off. Um, the qualifications and the minimum standards for the immediate, um, for back pay or for the immediate realisation of their um, right to equal pay. And finally, I just um, want to just again state how important this is, that this is a fight that has been very, very hard fought and it is a huge honour to stand and be a part of celebrating this victory for women coming together in union 
in the interests of all. Kia ora. I, <clears throat> I uh, call Tracy Martin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise.